Who do you think the smartest person in the world is? Whoever that may be, if you put them in charge of literally every aspect of life within a community, how do you think that would work? We may feel some hesitation there, because even though they may be a genius, they don't know you and what's best for you, right? Each of us is unique, with different skills, but more importantly, different personalities. We have dreams and wants that can't be objectively measured by some algorithm, but are instead very personal to us. Essentially, we have our own unique knowledge, and it's impossible for one person or entity to fully comprehend all of our individual lives. This is the second video in a series I'm doing on the concept of intellectual humility. In this video, we're looking at the economist and academic F.A. Hayek, and his essay on the use of knowledge in society. Society. You might have heard of Hayek before if you've taken an econ or political science class, but he is so much more than just an economist. He has two doctorates in both law and political science, but for this channel specifically, he's written and lectured on philosophy, specifically in the area of epistemology. If I can generally sum up Hayek's epistemology, he's mainly interested in the social sciences and skepticism. He isn't as gung-ho as David Hume, but was definitely influenced by him. Now in this essay, Hayek asks what's the problem economics is trying to solve, be it through a neoclassical, Marxist, or Keynesian thought. What are all of these systems trying to accomplish? One answer might be the most ideal allocation of resources, but each system will run up onto the same problem, the lack of information. Let's scale this down a bit so it's not too much. Say you're in class and your teacher gives you a variety pack of candy and tells you to give out a piece to everyone ideally. To do this, you need knowledge of preferences. Does David like Skittles? Does Margaret like Hershey's? That sort of thing. The knowledge on how best to divide this candy is not centrally held by you, but rather it's dispersed through the entire class. It is rather a problem of how to secure the best use of resources known to any of the members of society for ends whose relative importance only these individuals know. Unless you're a Marxist and prefer a labor theory of value, we often think about how we value things as subjective. For example, when you go to a mall or grocery store, not everyone is going to be buying the same things because we all have unique tastes and interests. Sure, there's overlap and trends, but what we value is dependent on us, but more specifically, our situation in a given place and time. Like given the choice between a diamond and water, we'd probably choose the diamond. But if we're lost and dehydrated in the desert, you'd probably prefer the water. And then there's probably even people in that situation who would choose the diamond, maybe because they hope to get out of there soon or something. What I'm getting at is what we individually value in society is complex, subjective, and subject to change. Yeah, social theorists can hypothesize all they want about why someone may want something, but ultimately it's a mystery locked behind the mind of some individual, and not even that individual may fully know why they want something themselves. So with all this knowledge dispersed, how can just one person really know what everyone else wants or what's best for everyone? Relating this back to our theme of intellectual humility, when we think we know what's best for society, maybe we should take a step back and recognize the incredible complexity that is how individuals value things. Now all of that was just talking about the demand side of economics. The supply side is much more complicated. Practically every individual has some advantage over all others, because he possesses unique information of which beneficial use might be made, but of which use can be made only if the decisions depending on it are left to him or are made with his active cooperation. There are so many jobs in the world. And I'm not talking about available jobs, but just variety of jobs. There's dry cleaners, trash collectors, fry cooks, five-star restaurant cooks, bakers, bartenders, warehouse workers, crane operators, data analysts. You get the picture. All of these occupations require very unique and specialized knowledge. Even a job we might consider mundane, like a drive through operator, requires some knowledge and experience as to how to perform the task well. And this is not something you could just learn in a textbook. There is a divide between education and experience. So again, even if we have that super genius who knows everything, just because they know everything about welding doesn't mean they have experience welding and can understand its practical operations. We need to only remember how much we have to learn in any occupation after we have completed our theoretical training how big a part of our working life we spend learning particular jobs, and how valuable an asset in all walks of life is knowledge of people, of local conditions, and of special circumstances. Now we have all this specialized and unique knowledge dispersed throughout our society, which no one person or group could fully comprehend. But what if we had a supercomputer running things that would have all the data ever, 
and it'd be updated constantly and it'd be like President Eden from Fallout 3. Even then, our thoughts and desires are private and constantly changing. When you go to the grocery store, we usually have an idea of what we're going to get, but we could be flexible. We might find a better substitute product, or maybe we feel like we want to splurge a bit in the moment. Whatever the case is, not even a supercomputer could fully grasp all of that knowledge. And if a supercomputer can't do it, can we as an individual? That's the thing about statistics. Hayek doesn't want us to equate social statistics with empirical observations about the natural sciences. Why? Because social statistics are limited and more subject to change. People will throw around social statistics in a debate, and yeah, they do mean something, but what are social statistics in the first place? It's an observation made during a specific place, in specific time, using a sample of people. Now not all the statistics are the same, because reliability varies depending on the sample size, bias, and other human factors. And furthermore, because it is an observation made during a specific time and place, results may change based on time or location. So even if we're armed with the statistical fact that 85% of people prefer Popeyes over KFC, we can't get inside the head of those people who were surveyed to see why they think that, if they actually think that, and most importantly, if they'll continue to think that in the future. Social statistics are like Paper. It's fleeting, but the individual will always have access to their own current thoughts and feelings. In sum, even if some central entity or smart person were to be armed with statistics, it's ultimately the millions of unique individuals in the world who will be better equipped to know what they want and how they should operate. And this isn't limited to just economics. Hayek applies this to other social areas. The problem which we meet here is by no means peculiar to economics, but arises in connection with nearly all truly social phenomena, with language and with most of our cultural inheritance, and constitutes really the central theoretical problem of all social science. For example, let's take language. Say some central authority like a very smart academic or Merriam-Webster or the government decides that the word up shall now mean down, and vice versa. And they might have really compelling and smart reasons for this change. But us individuals in a society have experiences with up meaning up, and we'll still continue to use it as such even with people on the top dictating that it should be the other way around. Returning to our theme of intellectual humility, the knowledge of how the world works and what the world needs can be thought up individually and theoretically, but it'll never be as accurate as the amalgamation of all the millions of individuals across the world and their specialized knowledge and values. The problem is we'll never get access to that knowledge as one individual. Our brains can't handle it. It's a limitation to the knowledge we can individually obtain. So relax a bit, don't be dogmatic, and don't be so upset if someone disagrees with you. After all, they're working off their own unique set of knowledge and values. But maybe you disagree, and if you do, feel free to share why below. I won't be a hypocrite and get upset. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for more content. And with that, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day. <laughs>